Hi guys, we are live on air for another Google Hangout, for another webinar with uh, two of the members from the Powerful Men's Group. At the moment, I've got Pat Wu, Patrick Wu with me, uh, the guy who runs the Wooist podcast. He has interviewed me a couple of times and now I get my own back and get him on, on, uh, on this show, I guess. Could you call it a show? I guess it's a series of webinars that I'm doing with people from the Powerful Men's Group. Uh, where I coach two members of the group um, around a topic of their choice. Um, and this month, Patrick has uh, put himself forward to be on the hot seat, so to speak. Uh, Matthias um, is going to be joining us in a few minutes, uh, so he will be going second. But uh, feel free to join in. If you're online, send us a message, use a chat functionality. Uh, on the side of the screen, say hello to us. Uh, if you've got any questions uh, or just any comments, feel free to use that functionality uh, during the the webinar. So, hi Patrick, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ankush. Thank you so much for having this webinar series today with me. No problem. No problem. Um, why don't we just start off with uh, what are you looking to be coached on today? What would be really helpful for you to to kind of get resolved in the next half an hour or so? Yes. Well, the thing that I would love to have resolved is my overthinking about thinking right now. So I've been learning a lot about you know the three principles, as I think you're you're quite the practitioner in it these days. And the more I get into it, the more I get, I feel like it's kind of a paradox for me, or what do you call it? What's that word where you get, you, you're kind of a, you're kind of getting on both ends, like the farther you get, it's a double-edged sword, that's what it is. Okay. That's, that's kind of how I feel at the moment, where the more I think about thinking, the more I get lost in thought, and the more I'm just kind of like spiraling a lot these days. So... Do you want me to give you an example? Of what yeah, I'm please about? T tell us more about yeah. that. What, so there might be people yeah. on this show who, sure. who don't really know what the three principles are or what okay. you mean by thinking about thinking. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So, so, okay, so I'll give you an example. So I was on a date with, uh, with this lovely woman that was like sitting in front of me on Friday. And, and when I sat in front of her, like I started, t I felt like I just, start thinking about okay well okay well i can just if i if i just put myself in the moment then i'll, I'll be okay and now i'm thinking about being in the moment and now i'm talking about thinking in the moment or if something bad is happening i'm like oh that's it's a bad thought or and all of a sudden it, i think i just start thinking a lot a lot more now so so yeah i i'm kind of like i'm kind of caught up in a lot of thinking right now, as you can probably hear from just what I've said so far. Well, well, that's great. So so for people who are listening to this, who, who may not know what the three principles are or what on earth Pat is talking about, I'll, I'll kind of give a, you know, a, a little bit of a baseline, if I may. So the three principles is a modality or an approach that more and more coaches are using. It's still very niche, it's still very new. Um, but it's, I've been around the personal development world for 15 years, and it's the thing that I found is the most powerful of all of the things I've ever come across for transformation work. And it underpins pretty much all of the coaching that I do. And one of the things that I find with the three principles is it can look very simple, and yet there's a lot of misunderstanding about it. And it sounds, Pat, like, like you, you, you've heard something you're interpreting it in a certain way, but it's actually getting you more confused. So this is a great <laughs> topic for us for us to talk about, and it may help mm. other people who think they know what the three principles are, or, or are confused about how how it could be helpful to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, would you like me to go into like my actual problem or or the actual question I have? Or, sure. Or, okay. So. So recently, as, as many, well, at least you know, I've been doing this whole dating coach thing for, for a little while. And one of the things that I get real, a lot of like insecure thinking from is I don't, I don't 
exactly know if I have the authority to do what I do. This is kind of a big, big thing for me. So, like, why would someone want to listen to me? I, I think about this a lot. Like, like, I could, I believe that I have a lot of uh, the ability to teach someone, but when someone's like, well, what are your results? I get really caught up in that. Like, well, what are your results? And I'm like, well, how do I, how do I, and, and I think about like convincing them, well, this is why, and I get really insecure and like, well, this is why you should listen to me uh, because I've done this and this and this, but then I'm like, well, what, what do you have to show for it? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have proof? And then I get caught in, and I get caught in that. And then I start thinking, well, why can I, you know, teach men how to, you know, meet women or how can I teach men really anything? So that's kind of what I come across a lot. So um, I, I don't tend to to do these webinars for for people to grow their coaching practices. Okay. Um, and, and that's kind of what the one topic I say that I I, okay. I, I sure. don't discuss. But but I will talk about underlying that. I will talk about the thinking about thinking. Okay. And sure. What I, what I'm hearing and what you're saying is you get insecure. Right? Sure. That, that that's what I'm hearing, and yeah. what what to do about what to do about the insecurity that you you feel, and um, how 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 do you feel when? Like, do you feel insecure all the time? Do you feel like you don't have the authority all the time, or is it sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not? Yeah. Well, it's always sometimes like when I'm feeling much better, it's there, and then. And then when I'm in my lost my thoughts and, and trying to figure out problems, then I, I get more insecure then. So what are you listening to more? Are you listening to your to yourself when you're really lost in your thinking? Or are you listening to yourself more when you're kind of in a bit more of a grounded state, when you've got a bit more of a clear head? I think if I have to be honest. I think at the current moment, I, I think that insecure thinking is probably more real. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's probably what, yeah. I think I'm just, yeah, I think I'm focusing a lot on that, that insecure thinking. See, isn't it interesting, right? So here you are, this guy who you're, you're around the world and, you, and you're, you're doing what you're doing and it doesn't have to be coaching. It could be anything. And sometimes you feel really, really insecure. And when you're feeling insecure, what you're hearing is, am I good enough? Right? Is Sure. I'm paraphrasing. And sometimes you don't feel really, really insecure. And when you don't feel insecure, that isn't so much of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, and I'm right. And, and so you've think, got so you've got your state of mind. Sorry to talk over you. You've got your state of mind when you're clear. That's telling you it's not a big deal, and then you've got yourself when you're clearly not thinking straight. You're clearly not thinking rationally, and th and what comes along with that is I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. and you're paying more attention to that than you are to when you're thinking clearly. Do you do you see that? Yes, I do. I, I do see that. And I just thought of it right now. Whenever I am feeling really good, I don't even think about the insecure thinking or I don't even think about how I even have a problem. Now, what's interesting to me, Pat, is when I, because I have this too, right? Sometimes when, um, when I would be really, really, really upset, uh -huh. you know, and in so many different areas. When when I used to have a job, um, when I used to work for someone else, um, when I would be really, really upset, it sometimes would make sense to me. Like I'm just going to hand in my notice. Most mm. of the time, I didn't feel like that. But sometimes, when I was really, really upset, mm. it would look like to me, it's a good idea to hand in my notice. Mm. 
but I wouldn't act on it. I would dismiss that and go, you know what? I, I, I just need to go home. I need to get some rest. I'm clearly not thinking clearly right now. Mm -hmm. And it would pass, and the next day I'd be fine. Mm -hmm. If I if I was um, you know upset in a relationship, or if I'm upset with my wife now, um, when I'm in that upset state, I can think a whole lot of things like, ah, oh, this isn't going to work out. I should just walk out, or I'm not going to talk to her. That'll teach her. But I realize, you know what? I'm really up in my head right now, mm. and. I dismiss that thinking. Mm -hmm. And we all do that. We all have times when we know we're not thinking clearly and we don't pay it too much attention. Sometimes I ask my clients and I'll ask you, has there ever been a time in your life, right, even for one second, where the thought mm -hmm. of like really hurting someone or killing someone has crossed your mind, even for a split second? Yeah. Oh, I think about that all the time. Right. Have you acted on that? I've never acted on it. Right? Isn't that interesting? You know sometimes when you get certain thinking like, you know what? I'm not going to act on it. I'm clearly not thinking straight right now. Mm -hmm. I'm clearly not thinking clearly right now. And you don't pay too much attention to it. But for some reason, you've got this thinking of I'm not good enough and you're paying that an awful lot of attention and making that real. Yeah. Why is that? I, I guess it's just more loud. Or, or you know what? It's just when I'm when I'm in a really good state, I just don't be I'm not thinking of it's not even coming across on my table that oh you he's not good enough. But when I get into that insecure thinking, that becomes apparent. Like it's like the screaming voice in a sense. And when I'm in a good state, I don't get that screaming voice of, wow, you're so great. It's, I, I just feel great. And then I'm just reminded of, oh, he, they're right now because I am insecure. It's, it's like a voice. The thinking is louder in that moment. So, so that's kind of probably, probably why. So it, it, it's like really taking yourself seriously when you're drunk. <laughs> uh -huh. right, when we get drunk, we don't, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Or maybe we mm. do in the moment, but then afterwards we're like, well, I'm just drunk. Yeah. It's fine. Mm. I sent that stupid text message. I shouldn't have sent that. Oh, I was drunk. What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. True. You, don't do anything. you don't do anything about it. When you're drunk, you're drunk. The only thing you can do is just let it pass and you'll sober up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but trying to think your way out of a low state of mind or trying to think your way out of insecurity is like trying to drink your way to sobriety. Mm. It's like, let, I'm drunk, let me drink more. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense. I, do, I think when you pointed that out, it makes a lot more sense. Or it just occurred to me, yes, actually. That, that makes a lot of sense. I'm just listening to my insecure thinking of what is real right now. It's just a lot more real. And it's not really that much more real. I, I recently did a podcast with, with Jamie Smart, and I said something on it which, which ended up getting quoted and put on Instagram. And I think people have – I posted it in the, in the Powerful Men's group. And it was something along the lines of, you know, the problem isn't that you're not powerful. So the problem in this case, the problem isn't that you are not secure. Mm -hmm. The problem isn't that you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you've got a whole bunch of thinking telling you that you're not good enough and you believe it. Yes. Yes. And you know what? The last bit of that is important and you believe it. See, the problem isn't that you've, the problem isn't that you've got some insecure thinking. Yes. The problem isn't that you feel insecure sometimes, that you don't feel good enough sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone on the planet who doesn't feel insecure from time to time. I don't know anyone on the planet who doesn't mm -hmm. feel um, you know, lacking in confidence or ha has a momentary lapse. That just seems to be part of the human condition. But the difference I see is some people really believe it and buy into it. 
Mm -hmm. And some people don't. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I, I, yeah. And I'm, I'm just kind of curious as to how much I be, like truly believe in it. Like, like there are certain times when I can't, when I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to wake up to it. I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I forgot. I, I, I am supposed to be doing this. And then I do do it. And then other times I will get stuck in it for days and like avoiding certain things for days. And then it'll take me a lot longer. And, and then maybe like four or five days later, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. I am supposed to be doing this. Actually, it's not such a big deal. I just feel that it takes me sometimes a lot longer to get out of that state than, than other times. And why is that a problem? Because I, because I want, because I really want to be really efficient. Can you feel that sense of urgency that you have when you just said that? Yeah, like I really, I really wanted to be efficient. Like that doesn't yeah. feel like some some clarity. Like that doesn't sound like you're in a very clear state of mind when you said that. Like mm -hmm. it feels like there's this massive sense of urgency. Ha ha. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I really just, I want to make sure that I have, I just make better, I feel like, okay, I feel like I don't make use of my time really well. So because, or I don't use, I don't use my time as well as I can. And I'd like to be more efficient with my time. So when I'm caught in my when I'm caught in thinking about doing something for five days, and then doing something later on, and, and then waking up to it, I'm like, well, that was a lot of time wasted on thinking. That wasn't very efficient. So, so here's I want to give the example of a of a child, and I don't think you've got kids, but maybe you've got a nephew or a niece, um, or maybe you remember when you were a child. Yeah. If you were say struggling with with maths or math, as you guys call it in America. Yeah. Um, what do you guys What do you guys call it? We call it maths. We had an S in the end. Um, oh, really? <laughs> right. Um, so if you were struggling with that, and your your teacher or your parent had a real sense of urgency about them. Uh -huh. Like, come on, you, you come on, Pat. You need to really get this. It's really important. Mm. It's gonna, right? Or yeah. they were really kind and very gentle and very patient with you. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to be more effective? Well, definitely patient for sure. Okay. Now, if you turn that back to yourself right now. You want to be more efficient with your time. Do you know anyone that doesn't procrastinate? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I, I've never met anyone that doesn't procrastinate. I don't know anyone that's efficient 100% of the time. Really? I thought there might be some people that are efficient percent all 100% of the time. There, there may well be. Most people that I've met aren't efficient 100% of the time. I, well, that just kind of... That just kind of uh, uh, takes off a lot of pressure, a lot more pressure off them. But even if they were, right? Uh -huh. So that's the first thing. But even if they were, we're talking about you. Do you see that there's two ways you can be with yourself, right? You can yeah. either be very urgent and, and pushy and like, come on, Pat, you need to stop wasting time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or you can be very kind and gentle with yourself Mm. And be like, oh wow, okay, look, you know, you you lost sight of it, you got caught yeah. up in your thinking, and you know, next time you'll be okay, and yeah. be very kind and patient with yourself. What do you think is going to be more effective? Well, definitely being more kind to myself, for sure. And I just realized, or you just pointed out that I beat myself up a lot for not being as efficient as I would like to be.
So, so thank you. And that's a, that's, a, that's a big one. How do you think your life would change, and, and not just in this area, but I mean your whole life would change if you didn't beat yourself up a lot? Like if you were just really kind and gentle to mm. yourself? Well, I think I would, I think I would have a lot more joy creating and being who I am. I think I would enjoy a life a lot. I think I would enjoy my experience a lot more. I just got this real hit of sadness. I don't know if you felt that. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I can be a little bit intuitive sometimes. But did you feel that? Yeah, I think I, I, think I was slowly getting towards... Uh, uh, yeah, I felt like I was, I was, I was edging towards... Close, uh, closer to crying, actually. Yeah, I really felt that. It was like, just really hit me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it kind of felt like, oh, wow, I really have, uh, yeah, felt like I really beat myself up way too much around it. Yeah, and I can. See, yeah, and I can see. I can see now why. I can see now to be more kind to myself. I get the feeling you're really, really tough on yourself, from time to time. Sure. Yeah. I, I probably have pretty high expectations of myself. Or I feel, like I, I feel like there's so much in me that wants to come out because it hasn't come out yet, it, or it hasn't fully come out yet. It's like, wow, I, there's so much more. I, I, I'm, there's so much more I could be, be showing. There's a bigger way that I can show up in this world. There's, it's, I can still be bigger. And, and that's kind of why I guess I put so much pressure. And that's why you can say why I've been abusing myself in a sense. And it's useful to know that this isn't you being stupid. This isn't, you know, you don't need to beat yourself up for beating yourself up. But it's useful to see that you were doing that because it logically made sense to you that if I'm really tough on myself, Mm -hmm. then I'm going to perform better. And what I'd love to open you up to is there's, there's a better strategy than that. Mm -hmm. That actually being really kind to yourself mm. is going to get you closer to what you want than beating yourself up. Mm. Yeah, I really connect with that. I really think that. Yeah, or I can really see, I can really now see where, where I'm probably even getting more thinking about it because I'm, I'm being so harsh on myself. I think I'm okay. I think there's the surface um, meaning of that, and I think there's a deeper meaning of that statement. Uh, what, you would like me to... <clears throat> Would you like to elaborate on that? I was going to say the surface of, is, yeah, I think I'm okay in this moment. And the deeper truth of that statement is, uh, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. 
period. Whew. Yeah, I think right now I feel that, huh, I think I'm supposed to be where I am right now, and that's okay. I think right now, just because I haven't made a million dollars or haven't uh, met the love of my life or just because I haven't achieved what I thought my life should look like, I, th I think that's okay. Pat, are you open to something? Yeah. What if it, where you are right now is better than okay? Huh. Can you elaborate on that? What if it's perfect? Well, that, well that's pretty nice. I'd like it to be perfect. Well, what if in this moment it's absolutely perfect? Everything that is, everything that your life is right now, what if it was perfect? Mm. Well, that would be pretty damn awesome. Well, that is pretty damn awesome. And, and we've moved you from from maybe being really, really tough on yourself to seeing that is not helpful and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And this may sound like a strange question, but wherever you are in life right now, whatever you've achieved and whatever you've done, can you really love yourself in this moment? Absolutely. Well, I'm pretty happy with what I've created at this up to this point I'm gonna ask the question again and I want you to take a few seconds before you answer it because I don't want you to answer it just um, without thinking mm. I'd love for you just to reflect on it because I feel like you've been really really tough on yourself mm -hmm. like really really tough and really really harsh on yourself and you can't love yourself and be really critical of yourself at the same time mm-hmm So with everything that you've done, with how ineffective you think you've been, with whatever you've achieved and whatever you haven't achieved, can you love yourself in this moment? I know you told me not to answer, but yes, fucking absolutely. And do you feel the power of that? I feel invincible right now. See, that's the difference between like, I've got so much more to give. I need to flog myself and beat myself up until I do it mm -hmm. versus really loving who you are, really loving where you're at right now, seeing that it's absolutely perfect and letting the power that's inside you come out. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, like I said, I, I feel pretty awesome and I really do feel a lot more powerful. So thank you. Well, thank you. And we're, we're kind of right on time there. Um, I would love to go deeper with you, but we try and keep these to, to 30 minutes each. Fantastic. Um, Thank you. Um, so, so, so thanks, Pat. So I'm just going to pop you on mute. If anyone's got any questions or any thoughts, um, see Ahmed and Niels have replied on the side. Thanks, guys. Um, and thank you, Pat, for, for bringing up those questions and being really open to coaching. Um, 
you know, we've kind of got a glimpse of, in fact, what I spend four days doing on my immersion events. It's this topic. It's about being more powerful. And um, it, it, it's the topic of the book I'm writing right now. So, so thank you so much for bringing that up because it's a topic that's really, really close to my heart. Um, Matthias, I'm going to, uh, are you, you're going to have to unmute yourself if you can, and uh, and join us. Hi, Matthias, how are you doing? Hi, Chris. I'm good. I'm good, feeling good. really well these days, actually. Excellent, That's excellent. Nice. So we're just going to jump straight into it. What what would you like coaching on today, and what what can we help you with? Uh, we can continue from where we just came because one of the things that been bothering me a lot for. Well, last couple of months is to deal with uh, patients that a lot of the time when I feel really really uh, down it's because I feel like I'm getting nowhere in the things that I look forward to so I feel very impatient about where I want to go and why is that a problem for you because I think it's unnecessary to put this pressure on me in this moment to do more than what is out of my control at this moment. So why does it look like to you that you're being really impatient with yourself? Can, can you repeat? I just forgot the question. Well, maybe let me ask it in a, in a, in a different way. Um, why do you think you're, you're impatient with yourself? You, you see that you, um, it sounds like you see that this impatience isn't helping you. So why does it look like to you that you're impatient with yourself? Hmm. I think the thing is that I've come to this conclusion just a few days ago, but it's been bothering me for a long time. So just a few days ago, that occurred to me that I'm impatient and it doesn't serve me. In the last couple of days, I felt amazing because of that. So does that mean you've been more patient with yourself the last couple of days? Yes. A lot. But what sometimes it occurs to me that life is fucking short to be honest and i see so many possibilities that like endless possibilities and sometimes i feel like i'm just wasting my time doing less that i could so you know build, building on what we've what we've discussed with Pat, um, does it look like you to you it's a sensible strategy to um, push yourself in order to try and make some of those possible possibilities a reality? Or, or are you open to letting those possibilities unfold for you? Can you elaborate on what you mean by the opportunities unfolding? Well, the way I used to see it was the, the kind of typical personal development route, which is, you know, you've got to have a really clear goal. You've got to write down your goal. You've got to have a clear plan to what you want and you've got to be absolutely focused. And that's one way to, to make stuff happen in life, right? Like you'd be really driven and it's got to be this way. And, and I've seen people do that and sometimes they do that and then the rest of their life falls to shit 
right? And a lot of the times, even when they do that, they don't achieve what they want or they do achieve it and it wasn't what it was all cracked up to be. And I found a totally different way to be in life, which is what I've been doing for the last four years. And a lot of people seem to tell me that, you know, I, I've seemed to have done pretty well the last four years. I've gone from from being a nobody, if you like, in the coaching world and starting out this profession to being, you know, fa fairly well known and being interviewed and having clients all around the world. And yet I've done it without a real clear plan. I've done it without, um, you know, having a strategy or being really focused per se. I've had I've had a guide, I've had a direction, but it's changed. And what I found is that, you know, the other way to do it is just be be open. And um, I found that I tend to have my best ideas when I'm not thinking about stuff. Like when I'm just about to go to bed, when I've stopped thinking about things for the day, I'll have like lots of ideas and sometimes I'll have to jump out of bed and write them down so I don't forget them. And sometimes in the shower in the morning when I'm not thinking, I have like really good ideas and things occur to me. Like really, really like great stuff brushing my teeth before when I used to work for someone else or when I was on my commute I'd have all these great ideas but when I sit down and really like tense up and really stress out and really push myself to think about things that doesn't seem to yield as great results and and the other thing is when I'm when I'm open like when I'm just like okay like at the start of this year, I said, okay, I know I want to do this, this, and this, but there was a lot of space and I went, I'm just open to whatever shows up. And I'm open to whatever shows up means something may come to me, like someone may say to me, why don't we do this? Or here's an opportunity, which came up. I had an opportunity to do some coaching to some school teachers. That wasn't in my plan. And I said, yeah, I can do that. And I did that this year. And I'm also open um, because I had an idea and I had an idea to invite Steve Chandler over to London, which I did. That was just enormous. I mean, it was a, a huge thing. Anyone that knows Steve knows he doesn't do very many public events. Um, he doesn't come over to London very often. He's had other people ask him and he said no. And that occurred. But again, it didn't occur through me going, right, I need to be here. And then I've got these steps to get there. And if that doesn't work out, this is my plan B. And then this is my plan C. And this is my plan D. I was just really open. And, and things have occurred. And some of the things I have an idea about and it doesn't work out. And I'm like, okay. So for example, I wanted Steve to come back to, to the UK next year. He's not able to do it. And I could have been like, oh no, but this is my plan because this has happened and now I need to, or I've just been, okay, that's really open. What else can, what else can show up? Mm. That's quite nice actually. Because I have a lot of, I see so many possibilities right now that I want to do, but I can't find out which one to choose. I'm just thinking about how I can apply this. About being open. I don't know what else to say then. It feels you know, good to just take the pressure off myself to not have to choose one specific thing, but be open to more. I spent two years, um, between being 28 and 30, I spent two years really trying to work out what my passion, my vision, my dream was. And I'd write down really cool things. And I'd like put all these buzzwords in it. My vision is to be the best version of myself that I can be whilst, you know, making a good income and having a great, re and it was just bullshit, right? It was just like made up stuff. If, if you really ask me, what does that mean? It didn't mean anything. It was just a bunch of words. And after two years of trying really, really, really hard to work out what I wanted to do with my life, I finally gave up. I literally gave up, I, and I, it culminated by me spending two days to think it out. I'm going to have a thinkathon. I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to think, 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 and I'm going to work out what the hell I want to do with the rest of my life. I'm going to really work it out. And, and I was like, I've wasted two years trying to just you know think about it lightly. I'm going to do heavy-duty thinking. 
And I did that and I couldn't come up with an answer. And on Sunday night, I spent all weekend, Friday after work, I started. And two days later on Sunday night, I thought, I still haven't got the answer. And I was a bit disappointed, but I'm like, oh, well. I went back to work on Monday and I was like, well, I'm no worse off than I was on Friday. Yeah. Stopped thinking about it. That evening when I'm cooking, totally not thinking about it, I had this powerful, you know, aha moment where it suddenly occurred to me I should be a coach. And it was so clear, it was so powerful that I knew in that moment I was going to do it. And I still checked it and I still took the relevant steps and I did research on where to go and how to do that. But me becoming a coach hasn't happened now. It happened four years ago. And it happened because I wasn't thinking about it. And over the last four years, that vision has changed. And I'm totally open to that changing again. So I may get another insight tomorrow where it might be, boom, no, it doesn't look like you think it's going to look. It's going to look differently. That's what I mean by being open. Do, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes totally sense. Oh, damn. <laughs> and to see how, for, how much I've been trying to find one thing that I want to do, or at least I've had several different things, but they were try to make them more clear than they were. And I see that's not necessary. Wow. It feels really good. It looks like a whole load of thinking just dropped off your mind. It just looks really clear on your face. Yeah. I feel extremely clear right now. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> see, it's so interesting to me that as men, we see so much possibility. There's so much for us to do. And we get so caught up in that we end up actually doing nothing. And, you know, I, I love um, reading a little bit. Well, I lie. I watched The Last Samurai. I was going to say reading about The Samurai. I haven't really read much about The Samurai, but uh, it sounded cool. No, I watched The Last Samurai, which is a complete Hollywood movie. And one of the things that I loved about that movie was when they talked about the samurai dedicated their life to one thing, to perfection in that one thing, whether it was pouring a cup of tea or whether it was you know, being a warrior in battle. And they absolutely dedicated it to, to, to that thing, to that one thing that they did. And I loved that because I thought... Wow, that's the total opposite of, of how we live right now. We want to be generalists, right? We, 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 we've got so much FOMO, we've got so much fear of missing out that we want to be you know, a great dancer and we want to be a great lover and we want to be a great businessman and we want to be a you know, great health and we want, to, we want to have everything, right? And yet the people that really do great, even now if you look at it, are the people that have extreme focus and dedication to one thing. And it really doesn't matter in, in one level, like I'm, you know, I'm going to do like a million foot view, right? A hundred thousand foot view. It doesn't matter what you choose. So if you're just open, whatever comes to you, that's okay. Like I've like coaching has come to me. I feel like it's come to me. It's, it's come arisen from inside me and that's what I'm doing. But in the world of possibility, I could have done a million different things. I get, I get insights all the day. I mean, I, I literally, I said to someone, I get million dollar ideas every day. Like I have an idea like, wow, if I implemented that, I could be a millionaire. But it doesn't speak to my heart. And yet when I was really, really trying to make money and trying to be a great businessman in my early 20s and mid 20s, I couldn't think of any ideas. And any idea I thought of, I dismissed it. It's too difficult or too hard. Now I just get them all the time. Oh, how, it's how okay. old are you now, by the way? Sorry? How old are you now? Are you now? I'm, I'm 34 years old. 34, wow. And see, one of the things that I'm most impatient about right now is that I really, really want to go travel the world. 
And I have a student loan that I have to take care of before I can do that. And that makes me quite impatient to have to pay that off. But I've made a deal to myself to not um, get any more depth before. Well, it doesn't make you off. more impatient. See, that's a misunderstanding. It looks like it's making you more impatient, but a student loan has no ability to make you impatient or not. There's no health warning when you take out student loans. It's not in the small print. Yeah. You are taking a student loan. Please be aware that student loans may cause you to be impatient in the future when you want to go traveling. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's that. It, it doesn't work yeah. that way. They have no ability to impact your emotions. They just can't. Yeah. And, and it's funny, right? But we do this all the time, including me. We give outside things, random things, power over us. This is making me feel like this, right? My computer is a piece of shit. It's making me feel upset because it keeps crashing. No, it's not. It's a computer. It has no ability yeah. to make you feel any way, right? My wife is causing me to feel really upset because she's acting this way. She can't. She can't. The woman that someone is saying she drives me crazy is someone else's, you know, dream girl, right? The computer that you think is a piece of shit is someone else is like, I wish I could have that that technology. It's it's not the thing. It's not the thing. It can't be. And yet, and this is a problem. So you might go, okay, yeah, well, that's just semantics or it's it's subtle. It's really powerful because if you give the um the student loan, the power to make you feel impatient, or if you have that misunderstanding, you will live your life through that misunderstanding and it will impact so many things you do, so many of your behaviors, so many of your actions, right? And if you let yeah. go of that, you know, when you drop it, when you um, renounce it, when you let go of it, it opens you up because then you can say, well, that doesn't cause me to feel impatient. Oh, that's, that's just me. And when you can drop that impatience, it may lead you to go traveling quicker. It may lead you to go, oh, I don't actually need to go traveling, but it just opens you up. Whereas when you have that misunderstanding, it, it's like your own cage that you're creating for yourself. Fuck. Yes. Wow. Damn. It's a really powerful perspective. Are, are you open that this could be more than a perspective? Can you elaborate on? Yeah, so sometimes people hear me coach and they say, oh, that's a good reframe or that, that's a great perspective. And that's cool. But what, more, what is more powerful than that is if you see truth in it. So rather than it's equally as true, right? So a perspective is, one perspective is that student loan makes you feel insecure or impatient, sorry. Another perspective is it doesn't. That's giving them equal weight, right? It's just a different perspective. Let's pick the perspective that serves me. What's more powerful is if you see that the student loan makes me feel impatient. If you see that just doesn't make sense, like it's not true, and the student loan doesn't make me feel anything, if you see that as true for you, you don't need to believe me, but if you see that as true for you, it's more powerful than just seeing it as a perspective. Because if you only see it as perspective, then there are a million other perspectives that can also be true. But if you see the truth in that, and if you really inquire about this for yourself going, wait a second, can, can it make me feel, well, and if you realize, no, it can't, no, oh yeah, because this is what I did. Someone told me it can't, and I was like, well, maybe, and I explored it, and I saw, shit, nothing can make me feel like that. Nothing can make me feel upset, nothing can make me feel angry. When I saw the truth of that for myself, and I encourage you to go and explore it, don't take my word for it. You know, you might think, okay, I can see it 50% of the time, but 50% I can't, well, go and explore. Because what happened for me, it kind of went 50, 50, and then I went, well, maybe it's 60, 40, maybe it's 70, 30, maybe it's 80, 20, maybe it's 90, 10, until I got to the stage where I'm like, wow, there are no exceptions. And when I started to see the truth of that, everything started to shift. 
when I saw it as a 50-50 thing, when I saw it just as a perspective, it's a lot less powerful, right? Because it's just, again, it's just a different way of thinking. It's like everything else we've heard, right? Choose a perspective that serves you the most. Think differently, yeah. think positive. That makes sense. Makes totally sense. Like I'll talk about this with relation to women. I I remember five years ago, for my all of my twenties, I had believed I need to meet someone in order to be happy. I need to meet someone who loves me in order to be complete. I was one part of a two piece jigsaw, and until I'd met the other person, then I couldn't be happy. And five years ago, I'd heard lots of people say you need to be happy with yourself first, and women don't make you. I'd heard all that as perspectives. But I never believed it. And five years ago, randomly, I one day had this insight. I had this aha moment. I had this eureka moment where I suddenly realized I don't need women to be happy. I don't need a woman in my life to be happy. If that's true, and it suddenly occurred to me, if I don't get married, I'm going to be okay. If I never meet anyone, I'm going to be okay. If I never have another girlfriend in my life, I'm going to be okay and I can still be happy that changed everything with regards to my dating life. Now, I didn't meet my wife straight away. You know, it was a year and a half later. But I think that really opened me up to meet her and have have a relationship because I suddenly let go of this misunderstanding that s someone would make me happy, right? And a woman would make me happy. And it allowed me to really enjoy her and enjoy the relationship without putting that misunderstanding on the relationship or on her. I'm so glad you bring this up because that's another part I've been impatient about. This just fits perfectly what to my situation at this moment. So thank you for that. And and there are probably other parts of your life where you feel that too, right? And again, this is a very short coaching session. I'm I'm trying to cover a lot in a very short amount of time because that's the time that we've got, but. If you really explore this, um, and, and like I said, this is what I, I do in my coaching, this is what I do in my immersion events, we really start to uncover where we have misunderstandings because as we drop them, as you and Pat have dropped today, they're game changers. And we, we I mean, we're just scratching the surface today, but they really are game changers because if you're living your life with these misunderstandings, right, we they're invisible to us. They're absolutely invisible. So it was invisible to Pat just how harsh he was being on himself, how tough he was being on himself. And it's like driving with the handbrake on. And it's the same thing for you. You've got these misunderstandings. My student loan makes me feel this way, right? Women or lack of women make me feel this way. And we are programmed to want to be happy. I believe that it's a core thing. Every single person is programmed to want to be happy. So if you think something makes you unhappy, you try and move away from it. And if you think something makes you happy, you try and move towards it, but it doesn't work that way. And so that's why you behave in really strange ways, even in ways that you know don't make sense to you, right? It, it, it ran, Random thing, it's why, and I've realized this in the last year, so many men are addicted to pornography, right? A lot of men know it's not, um, conducive to a happy relationship they know it's not conducive to the long-term happiness but in the moment and, and and there was a study done that said porn usage went up after a football team lost you know in america american football team if they if their their team lost right two things happened domestic violence went up and porn usage went up because that was the way people they wanted to be happy they felt on a really deep level unconsciously that's going to make them feel good right and on the flip side the team the, the people whose team won porn usage went down but it's all misunderstanding if people realize whether the team won or lost has no impact on how they feel right there wouldn't be any any impact on the porn usage yeah it's all it's all wow. flowing from these misunderstandings, right? It's it's even why why do people cut themselves? In their mind, 
that's going to make them feel happy. If I cut myself, then 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 maybe I will feel something, right? Or when 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 people have have kind of problems around food food problems, right? Whether they overeat because it's going to make them feel good, or they starve themselves or throw up because they think if they're skinny then they'll feel good. People have plastic surgery because they think that's going to make them feel good. I and mean, we can go on and on and on for like so many examples of how misunderstanding leads to certain kind of behaviors that if the misunderstanding was dropped, they wouldn't do those behaviors. Wow. I can even use this in my job. <laughs> That's cool. We've got a, we've got a, a member of our group, um, Arthur, who has taken this into his job. He's, he's a mid-level manager. He's saving his company hundreds of thousands of euros through seeing this in his company. And how misunderstanding, this is not possible. Okay, well, seeing that that's just misunderstanding and people getting really caught up on it, he's let go of that and he's implementing things that people have said were just impossible in his job. It affects every part of our, our lives. I'm I'm just aware of the time right now. Are, are you complete for now? Has this been helpful to you? Yes, this has been very helpful. Pat, could you take yourself off off mute? Yep. I, I love returning to to the person who I coach first and 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 listening to them. I, I saw you nodding a lot in the corner of my screen. <clears throat> Was that really helpful to you to 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 hear um, the coaching with Mateus? Yeah, I I got a lot out of listening to what he said and relating it back to what I think also. And it was really useful in that, oh yeah, I forgot. People can't really affect or, or, or not the cause of my thinking. It's like, it's just mis, uh, misguided uh, information. Yeah, so it was very helpful. What's the biggest thing you're going to take away from the call today? That what looks more real? Well, they they're all they're all not real, but when I'm in a higher state of mind and I'm thinking about well, well I guess the biggest thing is that you know, all is good. That, that is what that is what I c have come to. All is good, and I can just go towards the direction I want to I want to go towards. And the only thing that's really stopping me is when I make the insecure thinking real. That's the only thing that's that's really the thing that's stopping me, really. So I'm just gonna. I, I just thought about, oh, what is the next step? I'm gonna take the next step, and what I have to create, and just keep going because I know I'm gonna have insecure thinking. And it's just not real. Thank you. M Mateus, what, what's your key takeaway from the conversation today? I found some very nice things in Pat's uh, coaching as well. Especially the thing about feeling that everything I have right now is okay. And that I don't need more. It's still okay to want more, but I don't need more. And from my own session, it would be that I need to be more aware of when I put my f the cause of my feelings onto other things. If that makes sense. It does, and, and I've got a feeling that uh, as you move in this direction, Mateus, ironically more things will come to you when you realize you need them less it will come to you more easily well, well thank you both it's nine o'clock um i'm gonna i'm gonna stop the recording the the chat functionality will still work if you've got any thoughts comments or questions um please 
user side, we'd love to hear back from you. Uh, you can also carry on the conversation if you like in the Powerful Men's Group, if you had a particular strong insight, would love to hear from you guys. And if you'd like to be on the next episode, which will be taking place in January, after we've had a lovely Christmas break and uh, celebrated and had too much fun on New Year's Eve, then uh, please get in touch um, and uh, and we can arrange to have you on the live coaching session in January. Thanks once again, Pat and Matthias. Uh, thank you really much, uh, very much for being so open and uh, sharing with us today. Thank you, Ankush. You're fantastic. Good. Thank awesome. you.